Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Welcome back to Embracing Hope TV. Well, let's continue on now in this Easter season with part seven of the prophecy given in Rome. What I want to do, though, is focus on a sentence that I didn't uh, give much time to in the last episode. And that sentence is, a time of darkness is coming on the world, but a time of glory is coming for my church. A time of glory is coming for my people. And we talked about that time of glory coming for the church, but not so much about the time of darkness. So we'll talk about that. But regarding this time of glory, God has been preparing the church for this for the past uh, just over 40 years now. In the charismatic renewal, God poured out the Holy Spirit upon the church, which was welcomed by Pope Paul VI and John Paul II, as well as Pope Benedict XVI when he was a cardinal, welcomed into the church, embraced in Vatican II, because it recognized that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are meant for the building up of the body of Christ. And through the charismatic renewal, many gifts, many movements, many Bible studies, many uh, new, new movements among the youth were spawned through the coming of the Holy Spirit in the renewal. Second of all, God gave us a Pope, Pope John Paul II, who was commanded essentially from heaven itself to raise up an army of young people for these times, young witnesses, if not martyr witnesses for these times, who would be the great evangelists of our day. And we see many of these young people have become priests, powerful, orthodox, faithful priests. There's an army out there in waiting, faithful and young. And the third thing is God's raised up men and women in the church, many of them converts, who began to explain the Catholic faith to many Catholics who were left in the darkness of ignorance. They explained to us elements of our faith through logic and reason and showing to us where our faith was rooted in the Bible. And as such, they have begun to equip many, not just priests and nuns, but also lay people, an army of people out there who understand their faith, who can explain it, so that when someone comes up to them and says, so why is it that you worship Mary? They can respond and say, that's idolatry. We don't worship her. She's our mother. Now, the fourth thing I want to point out is this Blessed Mother. God has given her to us in these times through apparitions and through a renewed devotion to her because this is the woman along with the heel, the Church of Christ, her offspring, who are going to crush the head of Satan. As St. Louis de Montfort said, the Holy Spirit, finding his dear spouse present again in souls, will come down into them with great power. He will fill them with his gifts, especially wisdom, by which they will produce wonders of grace. That age of Mary, when many souls chosen by Mary and given her by the Most High God, will hide themselves completely in the depths of her soul, becoming living copies of her, loving and glorifying Jesus. That is, this heel is being prepared and is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and the renewal, apologetics movement, and Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict XVI are powerful gifts to the church to prepare for this coming time of darkness. You'll recall in the last show I talked about this so-called illumination of conscience or the illumination of souls or the warning as others have called it. A moment that's coming that's in the Bible, rooted in Scripture, and also spoken of by many of the mystics and seers and visionaries of our times, including saints, who speak about a coming moment when their souls will be illuminated throughout the whole world and we will all see ourselves the way that God sees our souls, the way that we would see our souls in a sense if we were standing before God in judgment. It will be a terrifying time and yet an illuminating time. It will be a troubling time for many and yet in many ways a comforting time. And it is, it is this moment that will produce, I believe, a brief period of evangelization in the world. But brothers and sisters, here is the warning that has been in my heart for years now that we see in the teachings of our church and that many who have come from the New Age are, are coming to us and warning us about is that I believe after this illumination of conscience, not only will God raise up His army that He has prepared in this time to go out into the darkness and proclaim the truth, but there will also be false prophets, false messiahs who will rise up and try and explain that illumination of conscience in New Age terms. I just did a writing and it's on my website. I hope you'll take a moment to read it because I'm not going to cover it all today. But it's called The Coming Counterfeit, about what's coming. It deals with some of the phenomena in our time, UFOs and so on. What, what do these have to do with what's going on? And I'll tell you, UFOs are very much linked to the New Age. As Christians, 
We speak about a coming era of peace. The New Agers speak of a coming age of Aquarius. We speak of a rider on the white horse, Jesus. They speak of Perseus, riding upon the white horse, Pegasus. We aim for a purified conscience through confession. They aim for a higher or altered state of consciousness. We speak about an era of unity in Christ, while the New Age speaks of an era of universal oneness. You can see now how Satan is aping the language of Christianity because, brothers and sisters, Satan has seen this illumination in the events that are going to follow coming for centuries. And what I mean by this is Satan has been preparing the soil for a false religion, a false explanation, and a false spirituality to replace Christianity in the world. He has done this by moving the world toward, believe it or not, atheism. Let me explain this. Over the past four centuries, Satan has sown in the minds of men uh, deceptions, sophistries, philosophies that are moving us away further and further from God. Rationalism, scientism, materialism, atheism, Marxism, and so on. A ways of looking at the world and interpreting the world with reason alone, not reason enlightened by faith, but by only that which we can touch, taste, and see. As a result of this, God is more and more being rejected from the world, and we are moving more and more towards an athe uh, atheism within the world. But listen, Satan knows that you and I are spiritual creatures. He knows that atheism could never bring world peace, that atheism could never bring about uh, satisfaction, peace, and harmony within our souls. He knows that you and I long for God. We are being prepared for a deception through this great vacuum which has uh, occurred in the souls of our times. And what I mean by this is look around us. This vacuum is, is being try, trying to be filled through drugs, through alcohol, through sex, through internet pornography, whatever it is, we are trying to fill that hole. And as a result of this, we're also seeing New Age spirituality and people seeking for, you know, through Buddhism, through Zen, through the New Age again, through crystals, through Reiki, through uh, labyrinths, through, you know, enneagrams and so on, trying to find some way to find out what is the purpose for my existence and what is this longing in my heart for the spiritual. And the answer, of course, is Jesus. But what else is happening in the world? The Catholic Church has been hobbled. Apostasy has entered into her ranks. And the door somehow was left to open. And what we see now with these abuse scandals, what we see now with, with uh, a pedophilia and homosexuality and all these things in the church, is the church no longer has credibility in the eyes of the world. We have been prepared for what is to follow after this great illumination that is going to come. And Jesus himself spoke about this. He said that false messiahs and false prophets will arise and will perform signs and wonders in order to mislead, if that were possible, the elect. Be watchful. I have told it all to you beforehand. That's right. After the illumination of conscience, of course, there is going to be a great evangelization. And as the Gospels say, believers will do powerful things in His name. We will cast out demons. There will be healings of the sick. There will be the raising even of the dead. We will see tremendous things that Christ has promised, but Satan knows this. And therefore, he, there will be false signs and false wonders using technology or demonic deceptions to, uh, to really deceive many people and prepare the way for the message that Satan has to bring, I think ultimately, possibly, through an Antichrist who will come on the scene as bring the one who can bring peace and harmony to the world. Listen, the Vatican has warned about this New Age deception in her document called Jesus Christ, the Bearer of the Water of Life. St. Paul also warned about this when he said that the Spirit explicitly says that in the last times some will turn away from the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and demonic instructions. Listen, we're not talking about little demons appearing in red tails trying to deceive people, but about human beings who have bought into the lies of Satan. And that's what the document on the New Age that the Vatican has released in the last decade speaks about. After this illumination, I believe we're going to hear this kind of language, and it says, We are gods, and we discover the unlimited power within us by peeling off layers of inauthenticity. The more this potential is recognized, the more it is realized. So let me just stop there. 
after this illumination of conscience will be those who are going to arise and say, ah, this illumination, yes, it's real. What just happened was real and it's a good thing. And what we need to do is peel off these layers of inauthenticity that have been revealed to each of us so that we can now enter into a higher altered state of consciousness. So, or, and we're already now well on our way through this illumination so that we can enter into a cosmic oneness with one another, into a peace and a harmony, not only with one another, but with energy and with the cosmic vibes in the universe. God has to be interiorized from the Almighty God out there to God the dynamic creative power within the very center of all being. God is spirit. Christ is a title applied to someone who has arrived at a state of consciousness where he or she perceives him or herself to be divine and can thus claim to be a universal master. Brothers and sisters, there will be a deception coming after this illumination that is, they're going to say, yes, of course, this sense of Christ that you had, it's not Christ out there, it's not Jesus Christ risen from the dead, but Jesus in you, the Christ within you. And now is the opportunity for the world to enter into a new era, the age of Aquarius, the era of peace. But not the era of peace spoken by the church fathers, but of false unity, of false peace and security. And that's what St. Paul warned about, that there would be those, particularly an antichrist who would arise and try and bring peace in the world, and it would be a false peace and a false security. You know, as I meditate and study upon these things, brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm just more and more convinced that it's not going to be books and it's not going to be even these webcasts and blogs that I'm writing you that are going to be ultimately going to prepare us, even though Jesus said, listen, uh, be watchful. I've told it to you all beforehand. So yes, a certain amount of knowledge is good, but brothers and sisters, the delusion is coming is demonic. It is coming from intelligent beings, demons, fallen angels who are far more intelligent than you and I. And they have prepared for centuries now a deception that will deceive, if possible, even the elect. And what I'm saying to you is I really believe that there's been a solution given to us to protect us, to bring us into a refuge of safety that this demonic lie cannot penetrate, brothers and sisters, and it's through this. It's through the Holy Rosary. Our Blessed Mother has come. She's asked us to do some very simple things. That is to turn toward her son, to fast, to pray, to pray the rosary. I believe it's through those graces, it's through becoming like a spiritual child that we are going to enter into a refuge that will protect us, that will give you the graces, not your own wisdom and your own perception and intellect, but supernatural wisdom that God will give those who have entered into the refuge of her immaculate heart, into the refuge of the sacred heart, Well, graces will be given in order to not fall into this deception. 2 Thessalonians 2 says, The Antichrist will come, the one whose coming springs from the power of Satan in every mighty deed, and in signs and wonders that lie, and in every wicked deceit for those who are perishing, because they have not accepted the love of truth, so that they may be saved. Therefore, God is sending them a deceiving power so that they may believe the lie, that all who have not believed the truth but have approved wrongdoing may be condemned. Now you might say, how could this be? How could people after the illumination where, as you say, if they see their souls as God sees them and there's this universal awareness that Jesus Christ and the Holy Trinity exist, how could people possibly turn away from God at that point? And my answer is very simple, pride. Listen, Satan was in the presence of God with a third of the angels of heaven and they turned away from God. Why? Pride, pride, pride. You know, St. Catherine of Siena, I believe it was, who said the gates of hell are open, but souls refuse to leave. Why? Pride. The prophecy at Rome says a time of darkness is coming on the world. But don't forget, it said earlier in the prophecy, days of darkness are coming on the world, days of tribulation. That is, the first part of this storm before the illumination is going to be a time of chaos. I believe the seals of revelation, the labor pains that Christ spoke about, and I've mentioned them several times now. But the picture we need to understand is that with natural disasters, and with famine, with plague, with food rationing, and with wars, nations perhaps warring even just for basics such as water and so on, the world is going to be in chaos. Just like the prodigal son, it wasn't enough to be bankrupt, it wasn't enough for famine in the land, it wasn't enough for him to feed the pigs, it finally took him to finally be on, on, on his face in that pig slop 
really before he ultimately was ready for an illumination of conscience. So not only is there you know, a spiritual answer coming that is false after the illumination, but there is an answer for the chaos that is coming. This is important to understand. And what I'm talking about is perhaps the son of perdition, the Antichrist, that individual arising to answer the chaos in the world, the disharmony, the wars, the lack of peace in the world. And really, he is the one, although he comes first at peace, he comes and brings about what I'm talking about here is the passion of the church. As Saint Cyprian of Carthage said, for even Antichrist, when he shall begin to come, shall not enter into the church because he threatens. Rather, he will come. As it says in uh, Psalm 55, his speech was smoother than butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. He violated his covenant. Okay, reality check. Antichrist? Well, listen, Pope Pius X in his encyclical, E. Supremi, in 1903, looking at the signs of the times around him, particularly the loss of faith happening in the world, himself said that he felt the son of perdition may already be on earth. Listen, that's a pope in an authoritative document, an encyclical. Pope Paul VI himself said in interviews that he felt that the signs of the end are already emerging. John Paul II, just before he became pope, said that we are facing the final confrontation between the church and the anti-church, the gospel and the anti-gospel. Are those code words, perhaps, for an antichrist? Pope Benedict XVI has talked about a growing dictatorship of relativism. Is it possible then that this dictatorship of relativism will then culminate in a dictator? Listen, scriptures talk about it, Jesus has talked about it, and our popes are talking about it. It's very possible after this illumination of conscience that this man will arise. As it says in that document on the New Age, the new age which is dawning will be peopled by perfect androgynous beings who are totally in command of the cosmic laws of nature. In this scenario, Christianity has to be eliminated and give way to a global religion and a new world order. Brothers and sisters, that is this Antichrist is going to come forward and give a vision of a paradise that we can create here on earth through peace and harmony and technology. It will be an androgynous being, that is, transsexual. So Christian morality will have no place in this new world order. He talks about cosmic laws of nature that we will have in our own control, not only through genetic manipulation and cloning and nanotechnology, which can create a much superior human being, but I think we are going to see impressive and powerful new technologies that might defy gravity and so forth that will also be part of this deception. Ultimately, the church, the Christian church, will be standing in its way. The New Age shares with a number of internationally influential groups the goal of superseding or transcending particular religions in order to create space for a universal religion, which could unite humanity. Closely related to this is a very concerted effort on the part of many institutions to invent a global ethic that is, a global charter of human rights that will form the foundation of a global religion. Of course, this charter won't be derived out of the gospel, not even out of the natural law, but out of the principles that will emerge from this new age, this principles of moral relativism that we are already seeing in our day. You see, this Antichrist will take the place of Jesus. He will take the place of the Messiah for the Jews. He will take the place of Mahdi for the Muslims. He will take the place of Buddha and so forth. It's his desire ultimately that his image be worshipped, that he himself will be worshipped. And he will do this by all taking a mark, as it says in the scriptures, the mark of this beast. Now, you know, what's going to happen ultimately after the illumination of conscience is many souls are going to embrace the gospel again. God willing, many of those family members of ours who have wandered away. In fact, I think we might even see nations reconsecrate themselves back to Jesus Christ, back to their roots. And when the Antichrist sees that his words, which have been smoother than butter, his words which have been softer than oil, being ignored and defied by the Christian church and Christian nations, then his words which were butter will turn to war that emerges from his heart. They will be like drawn swords, and his anger will burst forth against the Christian church, who will not compromise the truth, who go on to preach the gospel, who go on to produce miracles, 
and who defy the new world order, his anger will, anger will break forth against them, and the persecution, the passion of the church will begin. But before Jesus entered into that physical passion, he gathered with the apostles in the upper room during that Last Supper, and he said to them, I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus understood that it wasn't raising the dead or opening the eyes of the blind or healing the lame that was His greatest glory, that His greatest glory on earth would be to offer Himself as a living sacrifice for the salvation of mankind. That's the glory that Jesus came for. And when Jesus talks in this prophecy at Rome about a time of glory for coming for the church, I think the greatest glory of the church is coming is that glory when the church steps forward and declares before the world that truth who is Jesus Christ and she is willing to shed her blood for Him. As St. Paul says that we through our sufferings can make up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ and we will offer it to God and we will see many centurions beneath the cross of the church converting before the day of justice. Because remember what St. Faustina said, there would be a time of mercy for the world. God has said we are living in it right now, a time of mercy and that all who will not pass through this door of mercy must then pass through the door of justice. After this time of preaching, after the illumination, the Antichrist himself will become an instrument of purification. But ultimately, brothers and sisters, we know the cross is not the last word. It is the resurrection. And that is the hope of the church. That is the hope of the prophecy given at Rome. And I will talk about that in the next episode. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid.